There we go. That's better. These are starting to show up in people's mailboxes, so I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how to get one up and running. But first, let me tell you a bit about it. It's powered by a 12-core ARM V9 SoC from CIX. It has all the bits needed for hardware ray tracing, Vulkan 1.3, and of course, AI. All in a mini ITX form factor. And that means we get an ATX power connector, NVMe, and Gen 4 PCI Express, along with GPIO, dual 5 gig ether doodles, HDMI display port, USB, and of course, a backplate that you might not use because, hey, it comes with a nifty plexiglass test bench. Now, in the box, we get some stickers and a big honking clue that this just might be a dev kit. Yep, that's a DIY flash module for you to solder, you know, if you want to live a little. So instead of a review, I'm going to show you how to get Debian and Fedora installed. Then we're going to run a couple of benchmarks just to set a baseline since Rosda sent along their Rock 5 ITX and said, go for it. And to satisfy my curiosity, I'm going to feed the 06 a couple of PCI Express cards just to see what happens. But before we do that, we need to pop the lid, toss in a bit of Wi-Fi and storage, then unscrew these critters for a bit of PCI Express clearance. Let's get to it. Right now we got a Debian image, a Fedora image, and choose your own adventure mode. We're gonna start with Debian, so let's download that from the 06 resource page, guns up the image, and write it to a USB drive. Pop that in and smash that escape button. Select boot manager, pick your flash drive, and tap enter. Welcome to GNOME. Type in etch to launch Belina Etcher, flash from file, and in our home directory, select the Debian image. Select target and show hidden devices. Pick your NVMe drive and power through some warnings. Now it's safe to power off, pop out the flash drive, and you're good to go. Let's download the Fedora image from the 06 resource page, give it the gun zip, and DD that rawr to a flash drive. Pop it in and smash the escape button. Select boot manager, pick your flash drive, and tap enter. Ooh, shiny. And after a bit of setup, we have Fedora desktop. And if you really want to put a ring on it, you can DD the image directly to your NVMe drive. Smash that escape button, select device manager, OS hardware, and swap that up for ACPI. Hit escape, Y, escape again, and give it a reset. Back in the BIOS, head down to the boot manager, select your drive, and roll the dice. Here's a list of distros that don't currently work, but Debian 12 installs if you force the bootloader and bring your own network adapter. Here we are on the Debian desktop image from Rasta, and yeah, this thing is fast, but you're here to watch 4K YouTube videos because that is somehow a metric. And outside of a couple of drop frames at the beginning, everything seems fine. And browsing fascinating, nay, engaging websites like the Interfacing Linux web zone works like a charm. But back to the buddy. 2160p box playback with MPV puts a load on the 06, but hey, it's playing. But the age of silent film is over, so let's check in on the audio. The built-in audio has analog input and analog plus digital output, and I did confirm the HDMI audio is working. But you know what? I'm way more curious what happens when I plug this critter in. And it pops right up. And that means it's time to break out the site. This is Reaper, a digital audio workstation that I use to record audio for interfacing Linux and a couple of my podcasts. And right now, I'm playing back a live session with 22 plugins at 48K and 512 samples. And it's not spitting X runs. The pops and clicks generated when a system can't keep up with the session. That's really good to see. Now let's try one of these generic USB 3 HDMI capture thingies. Well, that just worked. 1080p60, right out of the box. Now let's try that trick with a 4K PCI Express capture card from Blackmagic. And I didn't expect this to work, not even a little bit. But the ARM drivers compiled, and here we are. Now let's feed it a AMD WX3100. After installing the AMD graphics firmware, yeah, that's a really cool party trick. Out of the box, Team Green is probably going to be a dumpster fire, and you know what? That's actually better than I was expecting. But what if we install the closed source binary drivers? I'm not going to pretend for one second that this doesn't feel wrong, but it's working. 
But what about that high-performance desktop-class GPU? According to VKMark, the O6's G720 is around 24% faster than the G610 and the ROC5 ITX, but that means nothing unless I can play VK Quake 3 at 4K. Not only does it work, it's smashing up against that 90 FPS limit. As someone who grew up playing this on a Voodoo 3 at 1024 by 768 this is really wild to see. The 06 has dual 5 gig NICs, we got 1 gig and 2.5, but I don't have 5 gig anything, so let's slap in a fiber card and count to 10. Let's take an early look at single core performance, at least according to Geekbench 6. The Orion 06 is about 44% slower than the M1, running Asahi Linux, and 48-ish percent faster than the Rockchip 3588 and the ITX Plus. In multi-core, the M1's lead drops to 24%, and the 06 happily murder rates both the R5 ITX and the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's wrap this up by reminding you that this should be considered a dev kit for early adopters. That said, let me show you what didn't work. Starting with this A310. Nothing. Nada. Didn't even see it on the PCI Express bus. And on a sad note for me, Firewire. Having this installed, it would just randomly lock up the 06. There's a lot that needs fixing, and CIX, the company behind this 12-core SoC, plans to provide upstream support of the firmware and kernel bits in the first half of this year to help get things sorted. Personally, I believe it when I see it, but if they do, things are going to get really interesting, and that's when you should consider picking one up. Unless you know what you're getting into and you want one to start hacking on. Link in the description, along with a link to the full write-up on Interfacing Linux that I'll do my best to keep updated as things progress. And thanks again to Rasta for the hardware. I'm genuinely looking forward to coming back in a couple of months and reviewing the 06, since it's either going to be a celebration or a wake. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. But most importantly, get out there and make something awesome.